Hi everyone and welcome to another exciting episode. Today we are talking to Kevin aka Mr. Mopar Man and he's an electrolyte, so a 72 satellite. He's been building over the last three years and he has learned so much and more importantly shared so much with the community. I really wanted to talk to him and he's going to detail the whole process of converting his car and also the next project he has in mind. So let's talk to him. All right, today we are here with Kevin and his, and his 72 Plymouth and it is quite a beast. Uh, we've seen it all over the internet last year, but we wanted to come back to Kevin and talk about all the details, what he built, why he opted for certain aspects of the build, uh, the drivetrain, the battery system, and so on. So Kevin, go for it. Yeah, so uh, I've always been a muscle car fan. I've driven muscle cars since my very first car I bought when I was 14, which I still have, and it's turbocharged, small block, gas burning, everything. And so this was gonna be my next big car for for building the next twin turbo car. It was gonna be a twin turbo Hemi car. And I love this, this body style. It's always been one of my favorites. And so I finally found the car. I had the Hemi for it, I was ready to go. But that's about the time Tesla's really started to gain in popularity and how powerful and fast they are. I just could not look away from that. And I totally switched gears and I decided to go all electric. Uh, and so I just had to figure out how all this worked. I'd never driven an electric car. And so I just wanted to build one. <laughs> and every time I've built something, I've learned every detail about it, all the ins and outs. And so I thought, what better way to learn than to just build my first electric car? So this was about three years ago? Yeah, 2019. Yeah. I bought the car in 2016, 2019. Oh, it's a COVID project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it was gas up until 2019, and then that's when I decided to go Tesla powered on it. All right. So you tell us about the very beginning of the project. You got the car, and then how do you figure exactly how to convert a car? Did you do any training? Did you learn from the internet? From Right, that was the hard part, because in 2019, there was a few out there, but it wasn't as, as popular as it's getting now, which is great. So a lot of internet research, calling companies that I, I saw had parts. So I went to Stealth EV. I had seen they had worked on a, a 49 Mercury. They used Tesla batteries, and I was just drawn to Tesla. Um, I've been a Tesla fan you know, since they came out, and I thought, well, that's the parts I want to use. So I, I sourced the parts from them, and they had a lot of good insight on how do you make all this work because you have a lot going on now. You have battery management, you have motor management, all these different things you have to uh, put together in this car that hasn't really been done very often yet. Okay, so now you have the part of the drivetrain. How do you uh, set it all up and why did you choose uh, the different uh, components you chose? Yeah, so the First of all, the Tesla large sport motor, uh, it was all about the horsepower, 636 horsepower. And I wasn't sure about doing two motors because again, I, it was my, I was learning doing this, so I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew. So I just went with the one motor. And in this car, it's such a fat car, which if you look at a Model S, they're really wide cars. And so to fit all of the Tesla components, I knew it was gonna work by measuring it out um, with the correct wheel offset. And so this was kind of the first challenge. How do I mount that whole subframe? I'm using Tesla suspension. It's from, from brakes to brakes. It's all Tesla underneath the car. So all the aluminum subframe, aluminum independent suspension. And so uh, it turned out it was easier than I hoped. It's all car shaped parts. It fit where the rear axle was. And so that whole uh, operation only took a couple days. I got the whole subframe mounted up there and I was like, wow, this was the right decision. This is going to take no time at all. <laughs> but there's a lot more to it then. Yeah. Then you have all the wiring and the batteries. Uh, the batteries by far are the hardest uh, piece of the puzzle. The biggest show, challenge. Show us the battery pack, yeah. Yeah, so we've got it split up into a few spots here. So in the back under this silver um, aluminum box, this is six of the 16 battery modules. And so the Model S, the, the batteries are underneath the, the bottom of the car and they're all flat. But I did not want to cut this car up just to make it like a Tesla um, for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't know if I was gonna make this work and I would end up going back to that <laughs> Hemi project. Yeah. Um, but then also I just wanted to keep it all intact. So everything in here is bolt in. And so you just repackage these battery modules to make it fit the car. 
And again, with such a big car, I have all the room where the engine used to be, and then I have this big trunk uh, for more batteries. What's in the orange pelly case? Ah, this is uh, anything orange on an EV is what you're not supposed to touch. <laughs> so I'm going to touch just the outside of the box, but it's it's definitely live in here. Whoa. So this is uh, all the contactors that make the motor um, get its power. I've got some bus bars in here. The uh, the two white contactors, that's for fast charging. And um, so we kind of keep this hidden away. So how do you fast charge this car? This car is uh, Chatamo right now, but soon to be Felton CCS. So nice. um, this is a Plymouth uh, satellite, but you can see this is a very rare Plymouth. It's the Plymouth Charger. So that's where the chargers are. We've got uh, <laughs> J1772, so that's the uh, AC220 or 110, and then this is the DC fast charging. Okay. So right. soon this will be upgraded to the CCS to turn up the speed a little so bit. So you can go cross country. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you've done it before with I've the Shadimo, it but it's getting more and more challenging, isn't it? Shadimo, it's, uh, that's what caused range anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> CCS is much better. Before we go under the hood, Tell us more about the suspension. It looks so fantastic. So this part of the suspension, uh, when I put the subframe from the Model S, I did not have room for springs under the car with the wheel offset that I chose. So these push rods uh, was all I could fit to the original shock mounting location. So this inboard cantilever setup, uh, it was just something I had to come up with to, to make it work. But it turns out the byproduct is that inboard weight, uh, the car handles amazing. So you use this for like autocross and just having yeah. fun and Drag running race, tires? Yeah, it's my daily driver. Yeah. Oh, I've got nice, uh, yeah. probably 18,000 miles on it since I converted it. Uh, I drive it in all conditions except for snow because I don't put snow tires on it. Talking about tires, you must go through a lot of <laughs> I do go through a lot of tires. Um, and it's not just because of the burnouts. That is a factor, but um, I mean, it's 4,300 pounds and you're putting so much torque to the road that it'll just wear tires. Um, these are 305, 35, 20s, but it still goes through them. Uh, the traction is very good, though. The, another advantage of having this battery pack in the back is the weight of the car. It's now 55% rear weight. Nice. So a lot of weight uh, over the axle uh, and then traction control. It'll really hook up. Come here and show us the front and also the braking system. I uh, gather you still use the regen from the Tesla? Yeah, so the regen is in the motor. That's kind of built in. And it's uh, I've seen it hit about 200 amps of regen. Um, Tesla brakes 14.4 in, um, in the rear six piston. So I matched that with 14 inch up front with the uh, Willwood six piston brakes. All right, let's see under the hood. Yeah. So I, I still have a big block under the hood. <laughs> so I call this the big block 400 volt. So this is the remaining uh, modules. So there's uh, a box of four modules. Underneath this box, another six modules. So 10 here, six in the back. That's a full Tesla 16 module pack to get 400 volts. That's the funny thing about the, the muscle cars from this era the engine bay is still half empty even though you have 10 modules yeah exactly there's so much room i love the big cars and the the great thing about the electric is it's just all about the torque it just overcomes the weight and uh, you still have a incredibly fast car uh talking about torque uh do you, do you have figures for torque and power so the horsepower is 636 the torque is it's 440 at the motor but then it goes through almost a 10 to 1 gear ratio nice. so you're talking over 4,000 pound-feet of torque coming off of the the gearbox no wonder uh, you go through tires yeah it's, <laughs> but i mean that's that right now power that makes these, these so much fun to drive this is i call it a street fighter because i still go out and uh cruise nights and and go look for other fast cars and you know if you're going to line up at a stoplight or somewhere on the road and you want to have a little acceleration challenge um normal gas car you got to be in the right gear or yeah. you got to have your turbo spooled the electric it's just always ready to go you just hit the pedal and you get full torque um let's go through the cooling system how yeah. how did you uh, so, cover this so there's a lot going on here um on this side this is just the motor cooling yeah. so what i did is i partitioned the radiator into two halves so this is a big block 440 radiator so it's huge so by blocking it off i have one half just for the motor that's full-time motor cooling yeah. The other half is battery cooling, 
but to be honest, you don't really need to cool the battery that much um, just through the passive radiator. I'll do it with charging, but on a day like this, it's kind of cool. I'm actually going to heat the battery today. Okay, so yeah. the, pro the program I put together for it will heat the battery to 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Um, and then if it's warmer than that, it's probably hot outside. So I have the air conditioning running. Okay. And if the air conditioning is running, then I'm just chilling the batteries with the AC. So the only time I'm using the passive cooling is just charging at home, low power. Okay. If you start to go to high power charging, DC fast charging, again, you need that AC chiller to have a right. better temperature differential to keep it intact. So how did you program it all and how do you run this? So I used um, from Racepack, it's called a SmartWire PDU and it's a 30 channel um, power distribution unit. And actually the whole car is wired with it. Even my flashy lights, that's all through the <laughs> PDU. So you can use temperature sensors to get feedback from the coolant loop and based on that return temperature, it'll configure the system and I'll just program the different outputs at different temperatures to uh, either trigger the heater or trigger the AC or the bypass. It, it's all programmed purely based on temperature. All right, let's have a look inside and see the different dashes you've got. Yeah, you got it. What I've done is uh, I wanted to leave the interior as stock as possible. So other than uh, just an aftermarket heated leather seat, it's all stock reproduction parts to put this interior together. And I wanted to leave the dash as stock as possible. Um, it turns out you need a lot of switches. So I've added switches. I've converted some of the dash, um, but to simplify it, I just used iPads for, for all of the indicating, uh, indications. So one iPad is all Tesla. This is through the EV controls controller that runs the Tesla motor. This other side is all of the battery data coming out of the Orion BMS. That's the um, battery management system for the, the battery pack. So with two matching iPads, uh, I've got more data than I can handle. You can data log on it. Um, it'll, it shows state of charge, all the, all the normal EV stuff, but it's in a nice compact uh, display. And we've almost forgot to mention how you called your car. Oh yeah. Yeah. The electrolyte, uh, just kind of a play on satellite. And, um, there's actually a friend of mine that came up with that and it just stuck. It was perfect. So if you were to redo the whole car, um, would you change the setup? Would you opt for a more modern um, drivetrain or a completely different one? So um, the, the baseline to that is how much knowledge do I have now versus what I had then. And so now I want more power. So it, it would be a plaid <laughs> it's, drivetrain. It's this never a, enough. Yeah, that's right. So uh, I'll just add more power. Yeah. And uh, so that's one of my future builds coming up is going to take advantage of that. Are you looking for a plaid uh, drivetrain? Yeah, so uh, we've got it. We've got it oh. all. Uh, and it's uh, it's going to be my friend's car, a 1970 uh, Ford Torino, and that'll nice. be a three motor plaid. <laughs> so it, it's going to be outrageous. Yeah. I can't wait. All right, uh, talking about project, I know you have something else um, in the works, so tell us more about it. That's right, yeah. So right now I'm about a third of the way through a DeLorean, and the uh, the DeLorean is going to be a really fun car because I think most people think that's probably the perfect EV conversion. Yeah. The DeLorean, just, it's, it's the right car for it. And so uh, I have a, it's actually for a customer, and he has given me just free reign to build it how I want. So again, I've learned a lot. And so that car is going to be a Model 3 performance motor um, and it's going to have this exact same battery pack. So okay. this DeLorean is not only going to have triple the power it came with, but it's going to have over 400 miles of range. Wow. With, uh, again, CCS fast charging from Felton, it's going to be just it's going to be better than a Model 3, but it's going to look <laughs> like a DeLorean. It's yeah. going to be amazing. Uh, so you're talking about customer. So this experience brought gave you the opportunity to set up a new business? Yeah, yeah. so um, going back to this car, I just was building myself a car and I wanted to learn this stuff, but it kind of took on a mind of its own. And so the business, that's how a lot of businesses grow. And so that's what it's become. Um, the customers are finding me and, you know, this is such a popular space now. Uh, it, it the kind of the sky's the limit. The waiting list is what everybody's working on. Wow. So what's the plan to build a couple of cars a year, completely different ones, or maybe focus on one system, one model? So that's a good question, because like I could repeat the DeLorean. I've made all the parts to convert another DeLorean quicker than the first one. Um, 
I just have such a love for the muscle cars. This is where I want to be. I won't be just converting any car. It'll, I'll have to really want to be in that car and, and see that car through. Yeah. Well, it's very important to standardize your system and focus on the niche and uh, be the Mr. Mopa guy. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, I mean, I like them all. The Chevys, the Fords, that, that name has stuck with me for, for decades. But um, big cars, I just like big classic uh, American cars, that's my spot. Okay. Uh, if you were to do this again, or maybe talk a bit more about the dollar and how, how much waiting uh, time are we uh, talking about? So um, I've got, uh, so the DeLorean, that's probably a nine month project. Um, I, I would say if you're going to have a car converted, you got to look at a year time for, for a big project uh, nine like months this. Is relatively short even, yeah. 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 And, uh, and then you, the line, you know, there's more and more shops coming up, but everybody has a waiting list. So okay. even to get in line, you're looking at a year to two, two years. Okay, let's make sure we mention your shop and your website. Yeah, so um, evmusclecars.net uh, is my website. My, um, all my social media is Mr. Mopar Man, so MR Mopar Man, and that's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. So all the car builds I do and all the work I do will be on all the social media. And I like to get into the details, you know, just like this. I show how I wire things and how I do connectors and Oh, maybe you want to tell us things. more about this, the, the, the nitty gritty about installing the system, the, uh, again, the challenges and... Um... Yeah, so, I mean, the, it's, it's almost everything. Like um, this little orange piece right here, that's where my old heater core was. But now you have tiny little wires instead of three quarter inch hoses. So I have to 3D print grommets and, um, and I want them orange to match. I've got more battery uh, cable management. The battery boxes, I mean, there is so much time and effort into putting these boxes together because not only do you have 32 individual loops of cooling that all have to run in parallel and be managed, but you have to secure these modules in place. So they, they can't be rubbing against each other. They have to be secure in the car. So designing the boxes and assembling the boxes it's it's a lot of time and fabrication um which for a car guy you know that's what we love to do but <laughs> it's definitely a, a new learning curve to the to the car world uh we haven't talked about the wheels yeah these are um american racing i've got 19s up front 20s in the rear and these were actually off the shelf wheels these were not custom made they fit um corvette c6 uh and so the offset just happened to be perfect that's to fit my new wider um, track, um, but then they also uh, complemented in the front. Do you try different setups of wheels or this no, just fit I, perfectly? Uh, wheels, uh, I have months of pining over wheels because to find the correct offset after doing some measuring, there's uh, without going full custom, it was a very limited supply. So I was lucky to find this one design that had the perfect offset. Did you look into a more traditional look for the wheels so the whole car would look like a... I a, did, yeah. and you know what the, pr the biggest problem is, is it's such a negative offset. Classic cars have a usually a positive with like a, a dish, but there is no room for the dish because the track width of the, the Tesla is so wide, I had to go all um, negative offset on that okay. wheel. And obviously the brakes are much bigger, so... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. You, so you can't you go 15 or 16, it wouldn't work, yeah. This car came with 14 inch wheels <laughs> on 195 tires. And so the brakes are bigger than the original the wheels. wheels. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. All right, Kevin, is there anything you wanted to add? No, just that um, look for me on the road. I drive around the Denver and Rocky Mountains all the time. So um, yeah, you'll probably see it out there. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you.